Hi, my name is Ben and today I'm going to demonstrate how to accurately and effectively take a manual blood pressure based off your Tollefson Clinical Psychomotor Skills prescribed textbook. There are a few indications for measuring blood pressure. Some include establishing a baseline for observations, assessing the patient's hemodynamic status, or to monitor fluctuations of the blood pressure due to the pathophysiology of diseases or medical intervention. A manual blood pressure should be used if the patient suffers from a weak or thready pulse, has severe hypertension or severe hypotension, as some electronic machines can give an inaccurate reading. The pieces of equipment you'll need for this assessment include a stethoscope and a sphygmo manometer, with a cuff, pressure valve and manometer. Firstly, introduce yourself to the patient and obtain consent. It is important to give a clear introduction as factors such as stress can alter the patient's blood pressure reading. Hi Nicole, my name is Ben, how are you going? I'm good, how are you? I'm not too bad. I'm one of the nurses here Nicole, would you mind if I take your blood pressure? Yeah, no problem. Okay, no worries. I'll just go grab some equipment and I'll be right back. Okay. Once you have consent, gather your equipment and prepare the environment. As usual, perform hand hygiene. Okay, Nicole, I've got all the equipment we need. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to go wash my hands and I'll come back and I'll be with you in just a moment. Okay. Make sure the patient is sitting with their feet flat on the floor. If this is impossible, a semi fialis or supine position will work. Okay, Nicole, can I just get you to sit with your feet flat on the ground? Yeah. And can you place your arm up here for me? There we go. Expose the upper arm and rest the arm with the elbow extended and palm facing up. Assess the arm and make sure it is suitable to take the measurement where there are no IV ports, the patient isn't having any pain, or there's no surgical intervention. Now before I start this, have you got any questions, Nicole? Is it going to hurt? Look, this is going to become tight on your arm, but it shouldn't be too painful. If it is, let me know. Yeah. It is important to ask the patient not to speak during the procedure, as studies have shown that conversation has altered readings by up to 40%. Alright, during this procedure as well, I'll ask you not to talk because this may alter the readings a little bit. Okay. Next, apply the cuff over the brachial artery, making sure the reading on the manometer is zero when fully deflated. Palpate to identify where you'll place your stethoscope. Use your guide to position the cuff directly over the artery. Right, Nicole, I'm just going to have a feel for your pulse here. Yeah. I've got that there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cuff on and I'm going to blow it up. And now let your arm rest for another couple of minutes, okay? Alright. For initial assessments, preliminary palpation of the artery gives a rough estimate of the systolic pressure. Palpate the brachial artery with your fingertips while squeezing the bulb until there is no pulse. This indicates that the blood flow in the artery has been stopped. Take note of the reading on the manometer for later. Deflate the cuff and let the arm rest for one or two minutes. Next, position the stethoscope over the brachial artery. Use the bell of the stethoscope if possible, as it picks up lower frequency sounds. Use your thumb and index finger to hold the stethoscope over the brachial artery. Now close the pressure valve and inflate the cuff until the manometer registers 30 milligrams of mercury above the initial palpation. Get ready to take the blood pressure now. Carefully release the pressure, aiming to reduce by 2 or 3 milligrams of mercury per second. Now listen for a tapping sound as you release the pressure. The first tap you hear will be the systolic reading. Notice the pulse of the needle as it registers the pressure. Continue releasing the pressure at the same rate until the tapping stops and there is silence. The last tap will be the diastolic. If this is the initial assessment, wait two minutes and repeat the same process on the opposite arm. Average out the readings and in future use the arm which provides the highest pressure. If there is a difference of more than 10 milligrams of mercury between the arms, notify a medical officer. Alrighty, now what we'll do, because this is the first time we've taken your blood pressure, we'll wait a couple of minutes and then I'll do it right on the other arm, okay? Alright.
Once there is silence, quickly release the pressure and remove the cuff to improve patient comfort. Alright, thanks for that Nicole. Mm -hmm. Now what I'll do, take all this off you. Once the procedure is complete, clean the equipment as policy dictates and document accordingly. I'll just go clean the equipment and document this information and then I'll come back and I'll take you to the ward, okay? Okay. No worries, see you then.